to when you are not genuine and when you are not authentic, it smells like bad body odor. People can sense fakeness. Everyone has that one person where they're like, mm, like they're nice. I just, I feel like you don't want to be that person. Hi everyone, my name is Mac Parker. Today I'm joined by Caitlin Kumi, the founder of Miss Empower. Thank you so much for joining us today, Caitlin. I am so excited to be here and talk all about networking. It's like my favorite topic, so I'm excited to share my gems. Yes, that's right. Today, Caitlin's going to tell us about how to network like the business baddie that she is. (laughs) So let's start out by talking about the meaning of networking. Could you define networking for us today? Yeah, in simple terms, I like to think about networking as relationship building. You're just building a relationship with another person. And networking is great because it can be beneficial for career purposes. It can be beneficial just for overall relational purposes. But usually when we think about networking, it's in the context of business purposes or career purposes. So I wanted to ask, how can someone utilize networking if they're still figuring out what they want to do in the future? I think, honestly, you shouldn't be scared if you have no idea what you want to do in the future. And you shouldn't be afraid of networking during this time. In fact, I think it's the best time to start networking then. And I was even in this space a few years ago where I had no idea what I wanted to do. Just go on LinkedIn or start reaching out to people that you already know, whether it be friends, professors, people who have helped you out in the past, and really start to get to know them, ask if they can connect you with people who are in fields that you might be interested in. And I think that's what really makes a difference when networking, genuinely being interested in people, connecting, um, not in the sense of being transactional where it's like, I want a job, like, can you help me out? Can you give me a referral? Like, no, (laughs) Um, genuinely be interested in people and what they do, be willing to support them and what they do. And support can come in different ways. It could just be resharing something that they're doing, could be liking what they're doing. It could be asking them, you know, if you need anything, feel free to reach out to me. Because one of like the best life lessons I I've learned it was something from Maya Angelou. She's like one of my favorite poets. She said, people remember how you make them feel. So imagine when you're talking to someone, you make them feel like, wow, like she reminds me of who I was when I was 20 years old. And, you know, the person you're networking with is in their 40s and they have this established career and they're like, I like her drive. I like who she is. I want to invest in her. You know, that's what you want to get out of these networking conversations. Or sometimes too, maybe you were that person who, you know, like their comment when only five people like their like picture or something. And they remember like, she was with me in the trenches. She was liking my stuff. She was supporting my stuff. She was sharing it. She was putting me onto opportunities. People will remember that. And when it's your turn, you might be looking for a job or you might be looking to connect with other people. People will feel more inclined to help you. People will feel more inclined to support you. And even too, if you do come with this authentic energy, even if you have no idea what you want to do and you're able to articulate or tell people, you know, I have no idea what I'm doing in life, but these are the things I'm good at. People will be more inclined to want to support you and say, okay, I hear that you're good at these things. So I hear you're good at marketing and social media. I think you would be a good fit in these positions at this company, or I think this opportunity will be a good fit for you. So the most important thing during that time, whether you know exactly what you want to do or you don't know what you want to do, is being able to be authentic when networking with people and not transactional. I will say that over and over. Be authentic. Do not be transactional. Great advice. Authenticity is so important and that definitely made networking seem a lot less intimidating now. (laughs) So next I wanted to ask you, what types of people do you need in your network? Oh, this is a great question. I feel like in college, especially the word mentor is overused. Mentors are amazing. They really are. They can give you that advice. But I think it's really important to understand the different types of people you need in your 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 network. So sometimes you have like mentors, those who give you advice. But I think one thing that's not taught enough in universities and that I learned a little bit later in my college journey and my postgrad journey is that you need sponsors. These are the people who are going to advocate for you when you're not in the room, whether it's, you know, 
being the one to advocate for you to get that return offer for a job being that one to give you a referral those are really like your sponsors and advocates and you need those people in your network because sometimes you might have a mentor that gives you amazing advice but they can't get you you know that connection in the room they can't get you um that opportunity that you really really need to take it to the next level so i would encourage people as they're building their network find mentors but also find sponsors and again i will stress day and day you need to be authentic and you need great people that are invested in you and support you some people too are just connectors and you need those people too they might not know people exactly but they might know the person of the person who can connect you know everyone has that cousin of a cousin of a cousin or that 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 person like oh i know so and so she's the sister of this and she works those are the connectors you need so i would encourage people to really diversify and understand how people play a role because everyone's different um some sponsors not everyone wants to be a mentor i know people love to throw around that world that word sorry people are busy some people are like i don't have time to be a mentor but let me know what you're doing i'll help you out and and know that role and some people they want to be mentors but they have no business they're like i don't want to be a sponsor so just being able to understand those things and read between the lines and build your network accordingly i think is really really key thank you so much for that mm-hmm. so i know that not everyone has the most outgoing personality out there so do you have any networking tips for shy people i think i love this question because I am truly by nature a fake extrovert or a reserved extrovert whatever you want to call me um ambivert whatever the terms are these days so I can really connect to those who are more on the reserved side if you are someone who is like I do not feel like taking up all the space in a networking event or it's just really really scary talking to you know the CEO of a company my secret is one change your networking approach there's not a one size fits all so i get really overwhelmed in big rooms what i like to do is just you know scope out people maybe i just say i want to connect with two or three like key people and i might just you know say one thing or connect with them a little bit and make that follow up making sure that you know maybe after the event i can set up with a time with them for like lunch or set up a time to have like a coffee chat over zoom and really get to know them further um also to when you know it's someone with this big title like CEO, CMO, lead investor of this, it can get quite intimidating. So what I like to do is pretend that mar- that they're those people that I'm connecting with that are CEOs like they're my aunties or they're my cousins because everyone has that auntie or cousin you FaceTime or that friend you FaceTime and I just pretend like, you know, this is like my mom's friend that she told me to connect with and it just takes that fear it takes me being intimidated all that just kind of goes out the window so i would say change your perspective rather than think about you know being this big scary networking event where you have to connect with all these people recognize that you have your secret sauce and you know you just have to make that one connection and follow up later because 9 times out of 10 a lot of people don't connect after the event or maybe they do once and don't follow up so you can be that consistent one and develop that relationship over time additionally you know take away the big titles at the end of the day people are people like yes they might be a celebrity yes they might manage this big brand but they have kids they have cousins they have dogs and pets they're normal human beings so treat them as people and you'll be okay i love that so much recognize that you have your secret sauce <laughs> <laughs> um so what tips do you have for staying in touch with people and maintaining a strong network since you said it was important to be consistent when talking to people. Yes, I think this is um definitely a challenge. I mean, just kind of think about it as having best friends, acquaintances. You have like your best friends, you know, those people you talk to all the time, you have your acquaintances and you have your Instagram friends. So, your networking relationship is kind of similar. It's kind of impossible to connect with 200 plus, 500 plus people consistently every month. Like there's not enough time in a day. So, I like what I like to do is categorize, you know, based on the person how you want to build that relationship. 
the frequency in which you communicate what makes sense and also what makes sense for their schedule so there's some people um that it's really important for me to have a long-term relationship with them whether it be for career advice whether we just we really vibe we have that connection maybe once a month might make sense for other people it might be once every three months um, for other people, it's once every six months, but it really depends on the nature of our relationship, how we connect. And there are some people where we honestly may connect once a year or once every two years, but we're always plugging each other um, with like opportunities, keeping each other updated, but that's just the nature of our relationship. So really understand like what is important to the other person because for some people, they're just so busy, they support you and they'll be willing to like push the email, but they just don't really wanna connect, you know, once a month, once every three months and respect that. But then there are some people where they're going to feel very used if you're not consistently you know, connecting with them, even in your approach when you message people, that's also really important. Some people are like, I don't have time to read your paragraph, one one line sentences. And some people want you to say, you know, how are you doing? How's your dog doing? Like everyone is different in their approach. So really, I think probably my communication studies background coming in, understand how people like to be communicated um, with and to. And I think that will help you as you figure out how to best maintain your network. Just as my mom likes to say, read the room. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, do you have any tips for how to make those um, cold messages? Yes. Um, I say keep it real simple and as personalized as possible. Keep it as simple as I admire your career path. You inspire me. Like imagine if you received a message saying you inspire me. I love what you're doing it's gonna hit different. So making sure that you're really being genuine in your approach. When I'm like networking, maybe it's a piece I saw that they did. Maybe it's something that they did at their company. I'm like, I love your new initiative. I would really love to connect with you to learn more about your career journey or learn more about how you did this. Like I said earlier, being genuinely interested in people is so so important so whether you're tailing your message having even the one line or one one sentence that says i'm interested in you i want to learn more about what you did i love what you're doing and i support you i see you you have my support you'd be amazed by the connections you can start by just genuinely supporting people and i keep stressing this thing about being genuine and being authentic because when you are not genuine and when you are not authentic it smells like bad body odor. People can sense fakeness. Everyone has that one person where they're like, mm, like they're nice. I just, I feel like you don't want to be that person. So be genuine, be authentic. Wow. I love the whole authenticity <laughs> thing that we have going on. <laughs> Definitely runs true to the Miss Empower mission. So it's cool to see that when you're talking about networking personally. Um, are there any common mistakes to avoid when networking? Yes. I don't know, but sometimes, I mean, we're all human. You cannot be entitled. No one owes you anything. It's not your birthright. So I think that's one of the mistakes people made. Like I connected with them. Can't believe they didn't give me a referral, blah, 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 blah. But like, they don't know you. They're, they don't have to do anything. They don't have to. You're not even entitled to a response back and that's okay. I think being able to take a step back and realize you're not entitled to anything is really, really something that people have to remember when networking. It's just like, not everyone wants to date you. Not everyone wants to be your friend and that's okay. But you will eventually find people who choose you, they want to invest in you. So remember just sometimes not to be so entitled. It's not your birthright to get everything. It's not your birthright to connect with everyone really help you be successful networking when you have that mindset. I think when entitlement gets in, that's when we really struggle. I think also some people, when it comes to response time, be considerate of other people and be considerate of their time. Do not miss a meeting. Do not be super difficult to schedule with because it's like you asked me for help. Now I'm going ring around the rosy to find an appointment. Nobody needs that in their life. So if you're reaching out to someone, be like available for those people in college. You know, if you want a referral, you want someone to help you out. It, it's not when you're connecting with them. They're like, OK, I'll refer you. Oh, wait, I have to get my resume together. I have to get my 
it has to be ready beforehand so be ready stay ready because when the opportunity arises you can't tell them wait two business days like they need it now if they're gonna put you on so I would just say stay ready be ready when networking because you never know when the opportunity might arise stay ready be ready definitely (laughs) some words of wisdom right there (laughs) Um, So before we conclude our interview, I wanted to ask, can you describe any instances when networking actually helped you land an opportunity? Yes, I'll connect it to Miss Empower because I feel like that makes sense. So we were really, really blessed to receive uh, features in Good Morning America and BuzzFeed. And how those opportunities actually came about was, um, what was I doing? Oh, yes. I was networking on LinkedIn. Yeah, LinkedIn and I were best were besties. And I was able to connect with a writer at Good Morning America. And it just happens through our organic conversation. I learned that she wore waist beads in college and she loved it. And I was telling her about how waist beads were trending. And I thought it was so important for women to really learn the history of waist beads and really understand the product, its origin. I wanted to help her use her platform to really tell that story. So we just, on just a normal conversation about our love of waist beads and her just happening to wear waist beads. But I wouldn't have known that if I didn't genuinely, you know, share about myself. I didn't ask her about her experiences. I would have never known that she wore waist beads in college and that opportunity might have never come up. So that's where I always stress to people, you never know where a conversation could lead. Even though we all have different experiences, you'll be surprised the mutual interests, the commonalities people have when you start sharing about yourself, you're being authentic. So that's, I would say, one of my favorite examples of how networking has helped me in recent times. Wow, what an incredible connection. And congratulations again on the BuzzFeed feature and the Good Morning America feature. That's so awesome. (laughs) But um, yeah, that pretty much wraps up our interview today. Thank you so much, Caitlin, for giving us awesome advice about how to network like a business baddie. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. I hope all my baddies are thriving now. (laughs) 